Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a very quick sketch of this cow in watercolor. It was a lot of fun. It was a fast sketch, it took me about 30 minutes and I um, hope you enjoy it. We're just gonna time lapse it here as normal on Sketchbook Sunday. Sorry about the out of focus bits there at the beginning. Um, sometimes my camera does that when it's just like the white paper and not much else. Hopefully it corrects itself. Um, starting on off by sketching on with a blue collar raised pencil. Because the cow is going to be a brown that leans really orangey. I thought the blue would be a nice uh, contrast and kind of stand out and give a little energy to the sketch. So I'm just going in there with some basic shapes, um, mapping out the face, the ears, the eyes, the muzzle, and um, basically just kind of putting in all those landmarks. I apologize again for the uh, craziness of my camera, but it will work itself out. Now I'm throwing in some uh, kind of yellow ochre colors here just to kind of warm things up and a little bit of burnt sienna. The paint that I'm using is the um, Paul Rubens phosphorescent paints, which has a bit of a glitter, glittery shimmer to it. And uh, it's just kind of nice. They're really nice and transparent and um, luminescent, uh, but you don't really notice the shimmery too much unless you're in a sketchbook. I do notice that... Um, that I see it a lot more if I can kind of tip it to the light. So I figured these paints will be best used in a sketchbook fashion where, you know, you're going to be handling it and holding it and there's not anything between you and the paper as uh, someone who's looking at it. I threw some pinks into the ears, uh, also threw some of that shadow, which I mixed with an ultramarine blue and a burnt sienna. And I'm going to town with some brighter colors on the face to really kind of separate it from the body and make it stand out a little bit more. These colors are so transparent that they practically glow on the paper. And I think that's really kind of fun. It's a, it's, it's fun just to kind of play with wild colors and see what they do. Um, and it's crazy to see what my camera has been doing <laughs> during this whole time. Um, I'm throwing in some shadow here using that same mix of brown and blue. And as I'm putting my colors down, I am trying to keep some of the brush strokes um, kind of loose and painterly because I just kind of want that kind of wild effect on my sketch today. Uh, working in your sketchbook, you should really feel free to experiment with different techniques, different colors, uh, and not worry about creating a perfect painting because if you're worried about that, then you're not gonna grow. If you're worried about having everything exactly right all the time, then it's really gonna hold you back. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this video today because I know it's not the most perfect I know the the um, the picture is not something that you're you know going to be you know writing home about or um, you know telling your friends about necessarily but I think you need to see that not everything is gonna turn out to a finished piece of frame worthy art sometimes you just kind of play and you get that out of your system you warm up in your sketchbook and oftentimes recently i found that the paintings that i've done that i've liked the most have been the warm-ups in my sketchbook that i haven't even filmed that i've just been like playing around and didn't take a lot of time but there's like a freshness and an honesty in those paintings that um, that are really refreshing and I really encourage you to give that a try. Now to make the cow seem more vibrant because there's so many yellows in it, I decided to put purple in for the background. I like to see what colors do next to each other. Um, I like to see how they interact and how a color next to one color can make the first one seem a little more vibrant. You can also add violet and purple over any of the yellow areas if you want to tone them down. I'm using some white gouache to put in some really bright uh, reflected highlights like the sun just kind of um, reflecting on the cow outside uh, and it's really kind of fun to do that because you know it just gives you that like break of color and I'm using a liner brush that's why I'm holding it straight up and down I don't need to reload that often when I do that so it just um, it just makes it uh, more convenient. I can paint quite a bit without having to stop and get more paint on my brush. So consider that when you're doing those final details. As long as you don't need too much precision, a liner will really work quite well for you. I like how you can kind of sculpt um, with a light here by adding more brights uh, and at the end, because you have that really, really bright value that's actually whiter than the paper, because the paper's kind of like an off-white um, tone, it just really gives you that kind of extra burst of of uh, contrast. And you could do the same with uh, a black pen if you wanted to, but in the opposite direction, you could get an extra deep contrast by doing that. Um, it's fun to play with values. It's fun to see how far you can stretch your values, how far you can stretch your colors and um, you know what you can do with a basically a very neutral subject 
and turn into a very colorful painting. So play with your paints, use unusual colors as you're painting. Oftentimes you'll use these crazy colors to begin with and then you end up neutralizing it as you go and you end up with a very realistic looking um, subject even though you started off with some crazy colors. So you end up with this life and glow to the picture that you wouldn't have otherwise if you just started with safe colors. And uh, as you can see, I fixed a mistake there. I had dropped some brown paint in the background, simply just wet it and blotted it and all was good. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am using a heat tool to dry things up and also soften my washi tape so it doesn't rip the paper. And there we have our finished painting. I think he's cute, he was fun to paint, and I hope you enjoyed him. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.